This is Frank Islam, Chairman and CEO of FY Investment Group and your host of Washington Current Review, where we interview leading voices from business and politics and explore the topics of current interest that impact you, the viewer. Today, our guest is United States Representative Congressman Keith Allison from his great state of Minnesota. Congressman Allison will be discussing current issues of priority relating to new legislation and public policy. Before I begin my interview, I want to thank Congressman for coming. Thank you, Congressman, for coming. Congressman Allison has been a source of pride and inspiration to all of us. We want to thank you for your vision, for your values, for your leadership. Thank you. And you have just done a great job. And we all look at Congressman Allison to advance our charter of the Muslim faith. Alhamdulillah. Uh, thank you very much for coming. You know, the President uh, Obama said in his recent speech in Cairo, Egypt, which I, I thought was a marvelous speech. He had done a great job. He's very agree. eloquent. He's a great, uh, he does a great job. You're the first American Muslim to be elected as a member of the Congress. How does it feel? Well, it feels uh, very, like we have a lot of responsibility. Uh, On your shoulder. Yes. Well, the fact is, is that whenever you're the first at something, uh, people tend to judge the group that you're a part of by your behavior and how you handle yourself. So uh, I feel a tremendous sense of responsibility to be a high quality congressperson uh, because of course so many who will follow in our footsteps will be compared by the job that we do. So we put a lot of time, energy and effort into being an effective communicator and to putting forth legislation that is really in the public interest. And the interests of the state of Minnesota. Absolutely. That's your four, first and foremost responsibility. That's my job. Right. The president uh, and Obama, um, that's the first president in the history of the United States of America, has reached out to the Muslim world on several times and several occasions. In his speech in Cairo, his speech in Turkey, and in his in even inauguration speech. Has the Muslim world reached out to him or to America? I think so. Uh, in my travels in Africa, Asia, and the Middle East, President Obama is very popular. I think that the world wants to give him a chance so that he, we can hit the reset button and start anew and start afresh. Internally, which, uh, and, and in, of course, in the United States, there's a large Muslim community. And, uh, Does I understand three million Muslims? I think perhaps more than that. Okay, okay. But the fact is, is that you know, the, uh, President Obama has, has spoken at, uh, uh, at the ISNA convention, which you attended as well. Yes. And, uh, and of course, uh, members of the administration have come. Now, I think there's more work to do. Yes. I think there's a lot more work to do uh, internally. I'd like to see many more Muslims serving in the administration. I think that they could serve this country very admirably. So we'd like to see that happen. Uh, but the fact is, is that I, we're within the first six months of this administration, uh, with many more appointments that are left to be made, I think that we're heading in the right direction. And we have made a sharp break with the past, which do is you, good. Do you think that the Muslim world has the leadership to lead and, 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 and find a common ground to work with America? Yes, I do. Uh, I think if you look internally within the United States, and of course when we speak of the Muslim world, we're speaking of the United States as well. Exactly. Uh, we have tremendous leaders. I mean, you know, uh, it's, it's not only that I'm on your show today, Mr. Islam, but you, you've been a tremendous leader in the United well, States. Well, thank you. Uh, but, but, but you've been a great leader, but there have been others, as you know. And then we have a rich pool of talent, medical talent, business talent, IT talent, financial talent. And uh, it's there to help America grow and prosper. Around the world, I think that there are literally millions of young people across the Muslim world who are looking for an opportunity to help offer leadership. No question about that. You know, Islamic faith that both of us share teaches, preaches, and subscribe to the notion of tolerance, equality, compassion, dignity, and respect. Yes. On the other hand, Islamic militants subscribe to the notion of tyranny and terrorism. Mm -hmm. How do you justify their irrational and radical behavior? Unfortunately, it's the human condition. Uh, within uh, a philosophy, a religion, a faith, uh, you will find people who will abuse the uh, teaching 
and who will abandon it and try to justify their wrongdoing with the faith. As we know, uh, the Christian world has brought forth uh, leaders like Martin Luther King, but we also have seen the Inquisition. Yes. We've seen the Jewish world bring forth the great prophets of old, but we've also seen the likes of Baruch Goldstein and Yigal Amir, who killed Yitzhak Rabin. And so the fact is no faith uh, can claim that we, that we don't have our, our bad elements. Every faith has them. And the people who believe in tolerance, moderation, and inclusion have to come together across faith so that we can represent uh, the best uh, in humanity. And I just want to say that for those people out there who don't subscribe to any faith tradition, um, they're not immune as well. Under Pol Pot, a, a, a atheistic philosophy resulted in the loss of life of millions of people, as well as under Stalin. So it's a human condition. And I think that uh, the Muslim community needs to pull together and to assert the best of our faith and the best of our community. Well, thank you. We want to shift a little bit of focus on your, the work that you're doing on the budget committee. I know you've been very instrumental. I know you went to the, uh, to the White House also. They're passing the stimulus bill. Yeah. And they're helping the, uh, creating a job in this country. Yes. But there has been a lot of discussions that the, the small business and minority owned business uh, really feel they're left out. And as you all know, the small business and minority owned business in this country are the major economic driver. Right. in this great country. Absolutely. What's your thought on this? Would you care to comment on it? Yes, I would. I think that we've got to make sure that the stimulus package really reaches out to all businesses, particularly the ones that are the economic They're engine. most. The economic engine of our country is small business. And I think that it's been somewhat of a failing in the stimulus package so far. So one of the things that we're doing in Congress right now is we are working with state, local government, Commerce Department, Small Business Administration, making sure that there's opportunity. In the financial, um, in the financial uh, regulatory uh, changes that we've seen, we've set up the TELF. Yes. The, uh, and this is a program that we've insisted that minority uh, portfolio managers and, and financial managers have an opportunity to, to participate in. Um, we've had a number of meetings with Treasury, with SEC and with uh, who we've pulled to our committee and said, how will minority and small business uh, financial professionals be able to participate? So this is something that we want that's very important, but I don't think we've done a good enough job at this point. It doesn't that. look like it. There's a lot of a complaint. Yeah, they're and right. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad you're on top of it. Yeah. You know, Congressman, you've traveled all over the world. I know you've traveled to Africa, Middle East, and Asia. As you all know, we lost our credibility in that part of the world under the Bush administration. True. And we do have a new beginning, as the President said. Yeah. How do we regain our footing? You know, it, we can signal change through good speeches, but the change has got to come through action. So, you, so you're going to have to match the words with your deeds. Absolutely. So I think that President Obama has set us on the right path but, we've, but the world is waiting for real changes in policy. Uh, and that means that uh, we've got to stay the course in terms of withdrawing military force from Iraq. We've got to understand that these predator drone strikes are not helping America in Afghanistan and Pakistan. And we've got to do more to help develop the people. Um, we're talking about development, which is driven and led by people on the ground, not by somebody in Washington in the Beltway. Uh, and we've got to help people meet the needs that face them every day, water, roads, things that you work on through your foundations. Um, these are the th things that are going to help improve relations in a real and meaningful and sustained way. We've also, but I think this, I think the president has done some good things uh, in the Middle East. Uh, he's appointed George Mitchell who's been working earnestly to try to resolve the Israel-Palestine conflict. And I think that we're on the right path, but the time for, we've now come to the time where actions are, are, are necessary. Meet word meets deed, as you said.